Hello everyone, let's jump into our weekly debriefing. This week we're going to be talking about two different things. One is back channeling and the other one is creating a QR code scavenger hunt. You can define back channeling is when students or teachers are having a side conversation different from the main one running in the room. Um, so if you are sitting in you know, class and your teacher's talking and you are having a side conversation with a friend via text or via some type of group chat, you are doing what's called a back channel. So this can be used productively in the classroom um, to allow students to use technology to have multiple conversations running at one time. So for example, um, the teacher is talking about a subject area in front of the classroom, kind of our typical stance, um, and students are pulling in questions via their technology that are popping up on the screen uh, for the teacher to answer. So the teacher's not having to stop every second and say, do you have any questions? And of course, people you know might not ask a question because they're embarrassed or whatnot. So in this case, these could even be anonymous questions to where the, the students are asking questions and they're just popping up. And as the teacher's uh, presenting or talking, they just incorporate the question and keep it on moving. Um, students can also um, read the, so another example of back channeling might be that the students are reading a text the night before an activity um, is coming uh, due and they back channel in questions as they come to them. So, you know, they're reading and they say, oh, I'd really like some more feedback about this or I'm not really, I don't really understand this concept and they pull those in and in the morning, uh, the, the next morning before the activity, the teacher pulls up these questions that have been submitted, reviews them um, and, and answers all those questions before they get ready to do um, the activity that day and that's more of the flip classroom model. So those are two examples um, of how back channeling can occur and I've got uh, several technologies linked in our Google Classroom that you can use to actually create a back channel. Next, we're going to talk about the QR code scavenger hunt, and this is the one that you're actually going to create. Um, and so a QR code, as, as we've learned earlier um, in the course, is just a means to connect um, an image, which is the QR code itself, to something else, a website, a text, an image, something. So you scan the code with your device, and it brings up whatever it is tied to, a web link, a text message, whatever it's designed to do. So in this case, you're going to create a scavenger hunt to where you will have Google Slides and the uh, you're going to create a hunt to where you're going to have multiple QR codes and the student will scan the first code. It will show them a clue. They will find, then they would go find the answer to that clue, scan the next code, get another clue, and again it's like a scavenger hunt. So they're, sca uh, they're they're getting the first uh, QR code, getting getting the clue, finding the, the response um, somewhere in the classroom, scanning that QR code, getting the next clue, etc. Um, and the idea is that you could place this around the room or the school to allow students to physically move around while they're scanning for those clues. So it turns it into um, more of a game type atmosphere. Alright, so um, when we look into Google Classroom and we look into our back channeling and QR codes module, um, you see that I have several different uh, ones linked in for back channeling. So Go Soapbox um, is one type of um, back channel that you can use. There's a video that shows you how to use it and there's the actual link to, to actually creating it. Um, now it will allow the students to uh, pull in to discussions. It will actually let them do quizzes as well uh, there. Um, so it is something that um, you can build and use for your for your um, back channel. There's also back channel chat which is a very simple one um, that can be used during an event. It can be used for things like questions and answers or comments um, and so basically you would create the chat and then just have it pulled up on the projector and then students could t uh, type in or pull in their questions and it, they would show up on the screen as you talk about the um, activity or the lesson. So there's a video on how to do that if you would like to use that one. And then another one that I like to use um, is a program called Padlet. And this one is, um, it can do more than just a back channel. Um, there's different modes of how you can create them. Um, so here's a video of how to create a Padlet. But here's one that I created that is like a question and answer for Charlotte's Web. Um, and so here the students would type their their ideas um, and upload their images. Um, and that could be kind of a chat that we have going on, more of like a Q&A. 
and then you have one to where you can make it look more like a board if you will and so here we have a board and I create adjectives verbs nouns and adverbs and the student is to come into the back channel chat and you know create an adjective or create a verb or create a noun and, and there's a way to interact with this board um, and it's a way to track to see who's doing what um, but it's all being done via a back channel not something that we're doing you know directly in the classroom so those are uh, some different ways that you can use the the tool Padlet which I think is probably the most um, it's canvas based so it lets you do more um, it doesn't look so linear you have lots of shared student spaces to work with so make sure to check out those so you can see what a back channel can do for you and then here we have our QR code scavenger hunt which is your actual activity that you're doing um, so here you um, are going to create a QR code scavenger hunt via um, Google Slides. So you're welcome to use just Google Slides template. Um, there's also Slides Mania, which is the one that I like to use to get pretty um, PowerPoint backgrounds or, or Google Slide backgrounds. So you're welcome to do those. And then here is the video of how to actually create the QR code um, scavenger hunt. I like to use this QR code generator. It's my favorite um, because it's so easy. All you basically do is come in and you pick a URL or free text or whatever. You type it in, save the QR code, and then now you have your QR code. So I like that one. There's lots of other ones on, on the internet that you can use. I just like that one myself. Um, and then I give you two examples of um, some QR code scavenger hunts. So here's one that I created um, to where basically this one is about um, fables. So that would be the standard that we're talking about. And so here uh, what the student does is they get this initial one and they, they learn about what a fable is. And then they scan this and it takes them to their first fable. So it will describe something and then they want to go and find the the page, these would be posted around the room, that would um, that would give them the answer. So then they would find this one, then they would scan the code and it would take them to the next one. Scan this one, take them to the code, etc. So that would be um, how that one would work. And then here's another one. So very similar to where they would scan this image, it would give them a description of some type of fable and they had to go and find the image that it goes with and then scan it and it would tell them if they were right or wrong and so on and so forth. So this is what um, your QR code scavenger hunt will look like. Um, and the video will help you create one. It'll actually walk you through creating one and how to create one. You just want to be very careful when you're creating these that you're making sure they line up, right? That if you, that when I scan this, it is taking me to the right code. It is taking me to the correct answer. You want to make sure that you have that um, all lined up. And then you have your grading sheet of how you're going to be graded. And with this, you are going to um, submit your QR code scavenger hunt. Um, you also want to have an introductory paragraph explaining what they're going to be doing with the codes and background on the lesson. Um, you also want to make sure that it is associated to a standard. Again, any, any grade level, any subject area, you want to make sure that on that introduction page it has that standard listed there. Um, you want to make sure that you have at least five QR codes in your scavenger hunt that do work correctly. Make sure to test them. Um, and you want to make sure that the QR code is kind of a game, it feels game-like, you know, you're guessing, you're moving around, that it's like a game. All right, but you're not uh, limited in, in, in the type of game you can create. You can do, I did fables, you could do any reading, writing, math, science, or social studies um, topic area, um, and for any grade level. Now, make sure that if, when you do your grade level, you make it um, appropriate in terms of their reading, right? If you're doing one for kindergarten, you're going to base it a lot more with images rather than a couple of words, versus if you're doing one for upper grade levels, um, fourth or fifth grade, you know, obviously you can ask them to read a little bit more um, and to think a little bit more deeply um, because they're they're older at that that age level. So just make sure that you keep that um, in mind. All right. So uh, what you're going to submit is you're going to actually put this um, in your. Um, you can just put it in a Google slide, and you're going to make sure that the QR codes are in there and that they're pulling the correct information. And um, your Google slide should have an explanation of how the QR code um, hunt will work, ex explaining you know to the students how to do the QR code um, hunt as well as the standard that it aligns to and your actual standards themselves or in your actual hunt itself. And you're going to submit that um, Google slide deck to Google Classroom here. Um, and that is what you'll use for your QR code scavenger hunt. So you have some templates that you can use if you want to, the QR code generator to create your QR codes, your two examples, your grading sheet, and then the video of exactly how to do it.